Usually we're talking about cow poop, uh, but in this case, we're gonna be talking about worm poop. It can be leftover food that's been left to break down or decompose. Uh, and decomposing really just means breaking stuff down. So uh, right over here, you can see a lovely picture of some beautiful compost. Da ding uh, And it, this combination turns into really beautiful fertilizer that makes soil rich and plants happy. So there's all types of benefits of composting. Uh, it reduces landfill waste, which is what we're really concerned with. And if anyone's ever seen some crazy big hills outside of this, the city of Chicago, that could be a landfill. Um, and basically it's just a big old pile of trash and the idea is to reuse things so that it doesn't end up going there where those nutrients can't be utilized. Uh, it reduces soil erosion, which is really great. Uh, it retains more water, um, which is amazing. So you don't need to water your plants as much and we can save some water. It helps carbon sequestration. So it keeps carbon in the soil, which is really good and rich for those plants and trees that are growing there. And then it reduces the need for synthetic fertilizers. Um, so we don't wanna use a lot of chemicals, pesticides, things like that, and using our own compost, which is a natural form of reusing waste and making fertilizer is a really great way to bring nutrients to our plants. Cool, so I talked a little bit about decomposition, which is breaking stuff down. And to make decomposition happen, we need to have decomposers. So there's a few players in this decomposer game. Um, one very important one is mushrooms or fungi. Da -ding. Um, so those are uh, eating up nutrients in the soil and turning that into nice rich nutrients. And then we also have bacteria and microbes. So those are super helpful. They're really, really small, so you can't actually see them. And then lastly, we have worms. So today we're gonna to be focusing in on worms because they can create a really beautiful vermicompost or worm compost made from worm castings or worm poop. Um, and first I wanna kind of break down the barriers of worms. A lot of people might think that worms are gross or not cool, um, but really they're not dangerous at all. They're not gonna bite you. They won't harm you. Um, and they're super, super important to our ecosystems in making our environment work and possible. Um, this particular type of worm that we're gonna talk about today is a red wiggler worm. And that is actually from Europe and it was brought here uh, with the colonists, which is kind of intense. Um, but it's been really important for making our land here in the US fertile and able to be um, nice for farming. So why vermicompost? Of all the methods of composting, why would we do it like this? I'm still hearing this dinging. Um, why vermicompost? Let's see. Okay, so why vermicompost? It makes really amazing, they make great, great pets. Um, it's a really great way to reuse your food scraps that could end up going to a landfill or an incinerator. Um, vermicompost is basically a mixture of decomposed organic waste, bedding, worm castings, which is the worm poop, worms, cocoons, and other organisms. We're using red wigglers in our worm composting bin, and they basically digest our food scraps that we wouldn't normally eat. So we're thinking like broccoli stalks, um, kale stems, things like that. And they produce worm castings or worm poop uh, that produce a really beautiful, rich form of compost. So now comes the interactive portion, you guys, where we're going to do a little true or false game, and we're gonna learn what we already know about worms. So I'm going to ask a question, and it's a true or false question. So in the chat, if you could write true or false, or just T or F to symbolize true or false, to say what you think uh, this statement is. If you think it's true, write true. If you think it's false, write false. So my first question is going to be, worms breathe oxygen. So who thinks that is true? Worms breathe oxygen. All right, so it's true. The answer is true. Um, worms breathe oxygen. They don't have lungs like you and I do, uh, but they do take in oxygen through their skin. So they need to have some wetness to their skin in order for them to breathe. And that's why we need to have nice moisture on them um, in order for them to breathe. But they can't swim, so they can't have too much wetness on them. Otherwise, they would drown. 
All right, so my next question is going to be, worms have six legs. Who thinks that's true or false? If you can write that in the chat, please. I'm seeing a lot of false here. Okay, we're seeing a lot, lot of false. false. <laughs> Amazing, that is false, congratulations. Uh, that is not true, right? Worms ha do not have six legs, they don't have any legs. All right, so the next question is worms have hair. Who thinks true or false? Um, lots of false here. I saw one big true, couple okay. true, yeah. <laughs> All right, and the answer is true, which is pretty crazy. You don't think that a worm would have hair on it, but they have really, really tiny microscopic hair called CT, uh, and that helps them to move throughout the soil. Um, so as they're kind of crawling around, that's really, really helpful for them. So they do have hair, and I'm going to show you a picture of what the worm anatomy looks like in a moment. Next question is, worms eat their own weight in organic matter daily. So they're eating their own weight every single day. Who thinks that's true or yeah. false? <laughs> Lots of true, a handful of falses, but mostly true and yes. Amazing. All right. <laughs> the answer is true. Yes. Beautiful. So they eat their own weight in organic matter daily, which is a lot of food for a tiny worm for them to eat that every single day. Um, all right. So speaking of eating things, worms eat living plants. Who thinks that's true or false? Worms eat living plants. So that's like if I had a live tomato plant and I would put a worm on it and it would just start eating that live plant. Ah, uh, I see about, I, I wanna say 30% true, 70% false. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my okay. estimation, yeah. It is false, you guys are absolutely right. So. Worms do not eat living plants, like I mentioned before, they're decomposers, so they really, really like dead matter. So they like things that's already breaking down, and they're the ones that are eating up that dead matter and breaking it down into beautiful soil. All right, so this next one's pretty controversial. If you cut a worm in half, you have two worms. And let's say for this one, if you cut a worm in half, you have two live worms. So write in the chat if you think that's true or false um lots and lots of trues and a couple of falses sprinkled in but mostly true all right so this answer is false which is very like i said it's a that's a tough one because a lot of people think that you will have two live worms um and i'm going to show you a picture of what the worm anatomy looks like in a moment but basically if you were to cut it in half you would have two dead worms um, there is a chance that if you cut the tail of the worm off, it would be able to heal and survive and you would have one live worm. Uh, but they might wiggle around after you cut it in half, but it's just nerves and you're gonna end up with one dead worm. So no cutting worms in half. All right, worms do not like light. Write in the chat if you think true or false. Worms do not like light. Uh, true, false, true, false. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> true, false. <laughs> true, true, true. All right. Yeah. All right. So the answer is true. They do not like light. And in fact, if they're in direct light, in sunlight or under a lamp for over an hour, that will actually paralyze them. So we really want to make sure that our worms are not in light for too long. Um, and that's also why you'll see a lot of worms after it rains because the sun's not out and there's a lot of water around so the worms will come to the surface because they're really happy and they want to be in kind of like the dark wetness um so they do not like light all right this one's pretty easy but we've got worm poop makes great fertilizer for the garden who thinks true or false True, with a lot of U's and E's and exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that one's true, that one is true. Um, all right, worms have teeth. Who thinks that's true or false? Worms have teeth. I'm seeing a lot of false here. One or two, right. two trues, but mostly false, false. All right, so the answer is false. You are all right, so worms, do not have teeth, they actually have a gizzard, kind of like a, 
chicken does. Um, and there are beneficial microbes and bacteria that live within the worm's digestive system that help them to break things down. So they don't have teeth. Um, and they actually just basically have like a flap that they can open or close. And whenever it's open, they're taking everything in. And when it's closed, they're not taking anything in. All right. So worms have three hearts. Who thinks that's true or false? Worms have three hearts. Looks like half and half. False, true, false. It's going back and forth. True question mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it is false. This is kind of a trick question because they actually have five hearts. So I'll show you on my worm diagram in a moment where those hearts are located. And this has a great deal to do with why worms, if you cut them in half, they won't survive because their hearts are on one side of the worm. And if you cut them in half, they won't have circulation to the other side because our hearts are pumping our blood, right? All right, so worms don't have lungs. Who thinks that's true or false? Worms don't have lungs. I think I already mentioned this one. Worms don't have lungs. I'm seeing a lot of true fact. <laughs> true. Yeah, lots of true. One or two falses, mostly true. All right, let's see what we've got. It is true, right? So I mentioned earlier that worms actually breathe through their skin. Um, so they don't have lungs like you and I do. They have kind of this porous type of skin that when it's wet, they're able to take in oxygen. So that's why it's important to keep them kind of wet. All right, worms lay eggs. This is our final question. Who thinks true or false? Worms lay eggs. Uh, I'm seeing lots of trues. Couple falses, mostly T, 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 T. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is a tricky question. It's, it's false. Um, they have eggs just like, you know, humans have eggs, right? Human women have eggs. Um, but they actually lay cocoons. So they deposit their eggs into a cocoon, which I'll explain how that works a little bit later. And I'll show you a picture of what the cocoon looks like. But they basically lay these little cocoons. And in each one of those cocoons, between two to five, sometimes up to 20, but usually two to five baby worms come out of there, which I'll explain a little bit more later. All right. Excellent work, everybody. Beautiful work. So worm anatomy, just a little bit about this. Um, basically, anterior is a fancy word for the front of the worm. So there is a front and a back of the worm. Anterior, it, you know that you're looking at the front of the worm by this bandage here. This thing is called the clitellum. And this is the worm's reproductive organ. And I'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a moment. Um, but you know that you're looking at the front of the worm by where this is located. Um, I also mentioned the hair earlier. This is a tiny example of this, but this is basically all over the worm's body. Tiny little hair is called CT. And again, those are there to help them move through the soil. Segment, that's just a fun word for a part of the worm. So you can see there's a lot of little rings on the worm. And each one of these rings is called a segment. Um, and then over here at the anterior, you're, you've got that thing, which is the flap, like the mouth. Right? They don't have eyes or noses like we do, or ears for that matter. Um, but they've got this thing called a prostomium, which is basically a flap that opens or closes um, that's over here at the mouth. And then we've got the anus, which is the butt, where all of the worm castings or that vermicompost, that really good nutrient-rich soil is coming out of. Um, and then posterior, that's just a very fancy word for the back of the worm. We've got the front and the back. All right, so worm reproduction. Fun fact about worms, especially red worms, is that they are hermaphrodites, which means that they're both male and female at the same time. Um, so that means that they have reproductive organs that are male and female. Um, however, this type of red worm does need another worm to reproduce. Um, the bulbous gland, that bandage that I showed you earlier, um, also called the worm band-aid, is called the clitellum, which is around a red worm's body and it contains the worm's reproductive organs. Um, when worms are ready to produce, the clitellum becomes visible and turns orange. So basically here, you can see this is the clitellum and it 
becomes visible and orangish, pinkish once, it, once these worms are ready to reproduce. And basically what happens is they join together in this clump at their clitellums. And after a few hours, they separate from each other and that's how they exchange their genetic material. And then each of those worms basically becomes pregnant, which is pretty wild. So they reproduce really, really quickly. And what happens is they'll produce this like mucusy stuff around this thing. And then they, it comes off of the front of the worm, almost like you're taking off a sweatshirt or something. And it produces this. So that mucus hardens and it turns into this cocoon where they deposit their eggs. And again, you could have between two to five worms come out of there, but at most there could be 20 if you have some like really crazy um, healthy worms that are reproducing a lot. Um, and from there, they'll usually deposit these cocoons at the top of the bedding um, where it's nice and moist uh, or in like something that's kind of moist like a um, mango peel or an avocado peel, something like that that's like going to be a nice area for them to lay their cocoons. And then these things are super resilient and hardy. Uh, they could last up to a year in freezing temperatures. So if the population feels threatened for any reason, they'll just produce a bunch of these and then hope for the best because those worms could die off, but baby worms could eventually emerge out of that cocoon. And over here, this is what a little baby worm looks like. I couldn't find a great picture of what that would look like, but basically they're these really, really tiny little um, whitish grayish worms that come out of here. And again, usually it's between two to five baby worms that come out of each cocoon. And then it'll take about two to three months until this baby worm becomes of reproductive age and they can start that process all over again. So it's a really, really, you can see that they're growing very quickly. Your worms will reproduce very fast. All right, so let's talk a little bit about worms, what, what they can eat. Um, so basically, worms can eat a lot of our food scraps that we can't eat. Um, so for example, they can eat potato peelings, carrots, lettuce, cabbage, celery, apple peelings, cores, banana peels, orange rinds, grapefruit, bread in some cases. You don't want to really feed it like Wonder Bread, for example. You don't want to feed it something that's super processed. Um, but they can eat a lot of the things that we can't. As well as cornmeal, oatmeal, eggshells, coffee grounds, coffee filters, tea bags. Those are a little bit dangerous because sometimes you see those tiny little staples in the tea bag. You want to make sure that the staples are out before you give it to your worms. Berries, greens, dead leaves, hair, dust, newspaper, brown paper towels, and bags. So they can eat a whole bunch of stuff that we probably wouldn't eat. So that's a super cool advantage of having worms around because you can reuse that material, those nutrients, and turn it into compost for your garden, indoor plants, outdoor plants, what have you. So a little bit about what worms do not eat, what they cannot process. Brought my little images down here. We've got some flaming Hot Cheetos. Um, animal bones, poultry, meat, fish, cheese butter. Um, you really don't want to give your worms any meat, fish, or cheese, mainly because there's bacteria, other types of bacteria that could grow in your worm bin, um, and that could be bad for the rest of the bin. Um, it could have mold or something like that on it. Um, butter, salad dressing, mayo, spicy foods. That one's a little bit of, um, up, up for grabs. Some people do give them like spicy peppers and things like that, jalapenos. Um, I don't give them to mine because they don't seem to eat them. So if they're not eating something and it gets moldy in your bin, you want to remove that right away. This is kind of an obvious one, but plastics, metals, and glass, anything like that, we don't want to put in our worm bin. Soap, greasy foods like pizza, right? Even if we have like an oily salad dressing, you don't want to put that in there. Glossy paper, oils, processed foods, any um, citrus foods like lemons and limes, you don't want to put that in there just because of the acid in their, their systems, it doesn't work out. Onions, garlic, yard trimmings that have been treated with pesticides and pineapple. So there are some things in here like onions and garlic, for example, that some people do feed to their worms, but it just depends on what they're used to and how strong your population is. All right. So how you could have worms in your own home or your classroom. 
pretty simple. You just gather these supplies. Um, you need a 10 gallon opaque storage tote. You could go bigger if you wanted to. Um, worms generally stay uh, in kind of the, the top layer of soil. So in this case with red wigglers, earthworms you wouldn't want to keep in something like this because they're called earthworms for a reason. They go down into the earth, right? So they wouldn't be happy in something this shallow. You want to make sure that it's opaque or you can't see through it because worms are sensitive to light, remember? So they don't want to be around light. Um, that would be a very unhealthy environment for them to live in. You need to have some newspaper or some form of bedding, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, you could use paper bags, paper towels, brown paper towels, um, nothing that's been bleached. You can use newspaper because newspaper actually uses soy ink. Um, so that's okay for your worms to process. You wanna have a handful of soil because you wanna have in some beneficial microbes and bacteria initially to help your worms digest. You wanna drill some holes with a 3 inch bit. Uh, and you would drill a bunch of holes. I can show you what that looks like in a moment onto the lid of your worm bin so that your worms can breathe. Cause again, they still need to have oxygen. And then you wanna have at least one pound of red wigglers to start off. So a lot of places you can source your materials. Some of these things you can find just sitting around the home. Um, worms, maybe not. If you have a really strong garden and a compost pile out in the garden, maybe you'll find some red wiggler worms there. Um, bedding, you can use newspaper, cardboard, egg cartons, brown paper towels, dead leaves even, but you really don't want to use too many of those. Um, you can get the bin at places like Home Depot, Lowe's, or Target. Maybe you even have one laying around the house. Again, you want to make sure that it's not translucent. You can't see through it. It's not clear. Um, you want to make sure that those worms won't be getting exposed to light. Um, red wiggler worms, you can get them from a variety of places. We've used Nature's Little Recyclers in the past. Um, they are closing down, but you can still find worms online. Uh, so that's an interesting one. Uncle Jim's Worm Farm or Buckeye Organics. And then just a small amount of soil found from your garden or an existing worm bin or you could buy it at the store just to make sure that there's some bacteria and microbes in there for your worms. Drill some holes, right? So you would drill it on the top of your bin. I think this is the bottom of a bin. Maybe they did it differently in this one, but this is accurate um, spacing for the holes. So you wanna make sure that you have enough for them and using this specific type of drill bit and making a hole that's this size is good so that your worms aren't escaping. Um, if you do find that your worms are escaping, there could be something wrong with your worm bin. Um, so there could be something moldy in there. It could be too wet. It could be too hot, too cold. Um, they like it between 65 to 75 degrees. So kind of what we like in our homes. So I actually keep my worm bin in my closet. And I know Karina also has one in her closet as well. Uh, so they're super easy to keep at home. Um, and they won't escape unless there's something that's going wrong in your worm bin. So if you're doing everything right, everything should be okay. So then you basically assemble your bin. And the first step is to create bedding. In this case here, we're using newspaper, um, where you rip up a bunch of newspaper, and I can show you how to do that in a second. You want to, when you're using newspaper specifically, really to avoid the glossy paper. So here we've got these advertisements. Right, those can be glossy. The worms don't like the glossy paper, so make sure that you're using just newspaper. Then you're gonna add some water to this and make sure that it's nice and wet. You don't want it to be soaking wet because again, the worms can drown. Um, so you don't want there to be too much excess water in your bin, but just enough so it's almost like wringing out a, a washcloth when you, when you hold it up. You just get a little bit of water, um, but not too much. Misters are really nice to use. I've got a mister that I can show you guys. Um, and then once you, your worms have processed, uh, you can basically feed them, I would start with about a cup a week and then go from there. As they continue to process food, you can feed them more and more and as their population grows. Um, but once you're ready to harvest them, there's a few different ways to harvest your worm compost. And I'm going to show you here, this is an example of what the compost looks like once it's finished. You can see it's basically just soil, just super cool. So this has been, um, I've, I've sifted this, I've gone through it to get out any solid stuff. So this is some unsifted worm compost that has eggshells and things like that in there. 
Um, but basically it's just soil. It's really rich soil that I can add into my indoor plants in that soil, or now that it's getting nice out, I can add it to my outdoor plants or my garden as well. Um, and there's a couple of ways to get this compost. Um, basically there's lighted pile method. So again, the worms are sensitive to light. So you can lay down a big heavy sheet of uh, plastic on the, on the ground or on a table or even outside, dump out your whole worm bin on the plastic sheet and then divide it into little piles. And since the worms are sensitive to light, they'll start to travel down and you'll find them at the base uh, near the plastic. And then if you shine sunshine or a high beam flashlight or a light on the pile, those worms will naturally go down and you can kind of take the top off of it and have nice compost and set that aside and then just scoop your worms up and put them back into a fresh worm bin with more bedding. There's the divide and sort method, which is stop feeding for two weeks. You move old bedding to one side of the bin and then add fresh bedding and food on the other side of the bin. The worms will naturally migrate to the fresh bedding and then you can harvest your compost on the one side. The last method is kind of morbid, um, but we work with a lot of teachers and sometimes this happens when teachers forget to bring their worm bin home over the summer where they stop feeding their worms entirely. The worms will naturally die. I can tell you that I've never found a dead worm in my worm composting bin because the other worms decompose and break down the dead worms, which is kind of intense. Um, but what we'll have left when you just leave it is some beautiful worm compost. Um, this happened to me one time where I had forgotten to feed my worms for a couple of months. The worms all died, but I opened up the bin and it was just fresh, beautiful soil and compost. Uh, when I opened it back up. So that's if you don't want to continue worm composting, you could just live and let die and then have your worm compost. So I wanted to give everybody a chance to ask questions, but I also want to show you a, um, my bin. So I'm going to stop screen sharing and show you all my worm composting bin. So let's see. Here we go. So this is our worm bin. As, as you can see here, we've got a bunch of holes in the top, right? So again, we wanna have those holes there so that the worms can breathe. They breathe oxygen, so we need to have a lot of holes. Um, inside here, we can see that it's just a bunch of newspaper, right? This is a relatively fresh worm bin um, because I recently harvested my worm compost. But you can see here, this just looks like a bunch of newspaper. Right, so I'm gonna show you in a second how to make that worm bedding. But if we pull it aside, we can see a combination of a few things. You can see some of my worm compost already in here, and then we can find some worms too. So they're kind of amongst coffee grounds um, and avocado skins, eggshells, things like that. But you can see my worms are just hanging out right in here. Um, and again, these are red wiggler worms. So I'm trying not to get it too close to this computer, <laughs> um, but you can see what they look like here. And this stuff, this is a combination of coffee grounds, but then also actual worm castings or that vermicompost, which is the worm poop. Um, kind of some cool stuff that you can see also happening in here is these little sprouts. So sometimes if you put in peppers, like green peppers, things like that, they'll start to sprout in there. And at work, a few times, we've actually taken those little sprouts and planted them. Um, and then you have some plants growing, which is really, really cool. Um, so I am actually going to feed my worms right now. So here, I've got my little beautiful plate of worm food, which is amazing. It actually kind of looks pretty good, right? <laughs> All right. So in here, worms are kind of lazy. They're kind of like babies. You want to make sure that their uh, food is chopped up finely for them to process things really quickly. So here I have eggshells. When you feed them eggshells, you want to crumble it up. <laughs> and you also want to make sure that it's uh, rinsed out before you put it in because there could be some other stuff in there. So I'm going to crumble up these eggshells. I also have some cilantro stalks here. Right, so this is the part of cilantro that we're not gonna eat typically. Um, so I can just feed that to them like so. Here I've got some broccoli stalks too. 
Some people will eat these too, you know, you'll bake them or roast them, whatever. Um, but in my case, I didn't do that today. So I've got those leftovers. So I'm just gonna dump that in here. And then last but not least, we have some coffee grounds. So worms, my worms love coffee grounds. Maybe it's because I give them a lot of coffee because I drink a lot of coffee. Um, but you can see here, um, you'll just kind of sprinkle that on in. And that's basically right now where my worm bin is at. That's how much I'm feeding them each week. So I've been feeding them every Thursday or Friday. It's good to have a schedule when you're feeding them to make sure that it's consistent. Um, but yeah, so that's basically my worm bin here. And I feel like we've got a little bit of time for some questions if people had questions. And again, I'm gonna show you the finished compost too. So here I have my finished compost, right? So this looks just like soil, cause it is soil. Right? And if you're doing this right, um, it's not going to smell bad. A lot of people think because you're dealing with worms and you're dealing with food waste that this is going to smell really gross. Uh, and it actually doesn't smell bad at all if you're doing it right. It just looks exactly like soil because it is soil. And then I can take a little bit of this, mix it in with my regular soil for outside, plant some plants inside or outside. And it's a really great nutrient rich way to give my plants food. And it's also reducing waste, right? So that's the big thing for Plant Chicago is that we want to reduce our waste as much as we can. So this is a really, really cool way to reduce our food waste. Cool, so I'm seeing some questions. Da, 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 da. Some people have a worm bin, which is great. Yeah, um, very, I have mine here too. It's nice. very similar to Cassie, so I'm not gonna show you, but... Um, so some people say, where do you put your worm bin during the winter? Sure, yeah. So you don't want to put your worm bin outside during the winter unless you have a really big worm bin. Um, and that, so that would mean that your population is really strong and they can handle being outside in the winter. In the case of what uh, I have, um, I need, I keep that inside. I just keep it in one of my closets, which might sound kind of weird, but um, they like it to be, again, kind of room temperature between 65 to 75 degrees. If it is too warm or too cold in there, your worms will start to die or escape. So that could be a problem. Um, okay. Can you use worms from your garden? I know you covered this, but it's an important thing to talk about. Um. Yes, so in order to start a worm bin, you need to have a good amount of worms. Um, and I see that's another question on here. I would recommend starting with at least a pound of worms uh, with a 10 gallon tote like this, a container. So you could, if you found a whole bunch of red wigglers outside, you could potentially do that, but you would need a lot of worms to make it start up well. Um, how so I, we said this too, but the place where you get red wiggler worms, there's several places. I feel like we got ours at a pet store when we first started. Does that seem right? For sure. You could okay, get so that's it at, another, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, so you could get it at a pet store. There's a lot of bait shops and things like that. Um, so if you're like a fishing shop, for example, you could ask for red wigglers specifically. Again, you wouldn't want to work with earthworms, right? Which is typically what you go fishing with, the big, long, worms that you put on the hook. Um, you don't wanna use those because they go really deep down into the earth and they wouldn't be great for composting in the way that we're trying to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, red wigglers, so definitely look for that. You could do go to a pet store or a bait store. Um, and some of the ones that I mentioned on there was Nature's Little Recyclers and that's one that's based in Chicago. Um, and you can order them online, which is kind of weird to order worms online, but they can come to your house and um, you can start composting. Uh, cool. Lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you tell the difference between different species, different worm species? Yeah, that's a really good question. I can tell you how to identify the red wiggler worm. Usually it's red, right? It's a little bit smaller than something like an earthworm. Um, so you would be looking for a red worm that's smaller um than an earthworm and there's some kind of like identification things that you can look up online too if you're finding a bunch of different types of worms too um, but the most common ones that you'd find here in illinois would be uh 
earthworms or red wigglers? Um, can you leave them out in the summer, your bin, when it's hot? Or is it no. better to, yeah. I would say it's better to, the type of bin that I have, it's much better to keep it inside where the temperature is being controlled. There are other worm farms where people are keeping the worms outside, uh, but usually that's if they have a really big population that's really strong. Um, if you have just a size worm bin kind of like this, you're probably not gonna have that many worms and it might not be as strong. So I would recommend keeping them inside. Um, some people will do it in like a normal tumbler composter too, where they'll have like a bunch of worms. So those are gonna be a lot more hardy and uh, that would be able to survive the winter as well as the hot summer. Uh, but again, in the winter they go dormant and they usually clump up into one big clump of worms and then they'll lay a whole bunch of those cocoons. And then in the springtime when it gets warm out, those worms will emerge, the baby worms will, and then they'll keep on that with that population. Um, how long does it take to prepare the compost bin? Oh my goodness, I would say probably a half an hour, not long at all. So if you're yeah, starting off super, super quick, and I was gonna show too, just kind of how easy it is to make the bedding. I've got some newspaper here, and really you're just gonna take the, bed, the newspaper and rip it into these strips, which I think is kind of therapeutic in a way. <laughs> Uh, and then you just get this wet. This is just the material that you're using. You're gonna get this nice and wet. Um, and then that becomes our bedding for our worms. And the worms will actually eat the newspaper, which is kind of a fun fact about them too, and turn that into compost as well. So if you have a whole lot of uh, newspaper or paper bags or something like that laying around the house, this is a really good example um, for that. Um, what is worm tea? Tea. Worm tea, yeah, worm tea <laughs> is like the liquid that comes off of worm compost. So if you're doing this on a larger scale, um, you might deal a little bit more with worm tea. In this case, I don't really, I don't deal with that, but I could make it. Um, and basically, it's kind of like making tea. You would take a bunch of worm compost and then almost put it in some cheesecloth, almost like a tea bag itself, and then dunk it into water and then you let it soak for a while and then that becomes worm tea. Or if you have a really, really big um, worm composting bin, there could be liquid that comes off the bottom of it and that could also be considered worm tea. Um, and you could use that just a, as regular fertilizer for your plants, which is really cool. So you could just add in that liquid stuff almost like when you're watering it. Yeah. Do worms bite? No, worms do not bite. Remember, worms don't have any teeth. So even if they did bite you, you probably wouldn't feel it at all because they don't have any teeth and it's just kind of like a flap. So it really doesn't do much. They're not going to bite you or harm you. Um, so there's really not a lot to be scared of worms for. They're actually really helpful and very friendly little creatures. But again, you don't want to keep them outside for too long in the sun uh, because after an hour they could get paralyzed. Mm. And could you just, someone asks, dig a hole in the ground and put food scraps in it, and I guess the worms will come, <laughs> I guess is their idea? That's, I mean, you might have a harder time finding enough worms, again. Um, that is a, a, a method of composting, which is just called the pit method, which some gardeners will actually do. They'll just dig a hole or make a pit and then put some of their food scraps in it. And then on top of that, they put more soil and then they just leave it. And then the worms will eventually get there, but it might take a long time. So if mm -hmm. you're trying to do it right away, I don't recommend that as like the fastest. Right, effort. okay. Um, can they eat eggplant skins and cucumber skins? Yes, or they can. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how many types of worms are there in the average garden? Oh my goodness. I don't think I have an answer to that question, unfortunately. <laughs> I think that, the two most popular worms that you're going to find in Illinois are going to be the earthworm as well as the red wiggler, but I don't know for sure how many species of worms there are in the average garden. Um, it really is going to depend on where you are, and there's so many worms in the world too. Um, so I don't I don't have a great answer for that question, but there's two 
Oh, there's somebody's in New York. Uh, there's yeah. two specific type that we find a lot here because they've kind of populated and taken over. Um, so just a couple more questions because we're running out of time. I think this is a cool one. Do worms sleep? I, you know, I believe so. Um, Karina, do you have a better answer for that? I think they do. Um, they I must actually, rest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly the specifics of it. I'm sure they rest like any <laughs> um, creature does, but I'm not sure about the specifics. Um, and um, yeah, that's something to look up. I could follow up with that um, when I send a follow-up email. Some people are asking if we, they could get these slides to help them. A lot of people look like they really want to do their own worm farm. For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I can definitely send, send the slides and we've got some other resources that we can send as well. Cool. Um, someone wants to know how long do worms get? And someone has asked about 230 times how much money are worms <laughs> online? I see that question. So. Yes. So, so I'll answer the how much money are worms online. Um, mm -hmm. They're usually about $20, $25 per pound. So a okay. pound is like a pretty good amount of worms. Um, worms don't have brains. They've got basically like a central, like a nervous system that's connecting them. Um, what else? How long do they get? Uh, it really depends on what type of worm that you're working with. If you were talking about a red, red wiggler worm, usually they get like, I'd say the longest I've seen is about this long, but there's some crazy giant worms out there in the world. So you could look up like a giant worm and there's some that are like six feet long. It's like kind of scary actually. Um, and then I feel like there's another question about uh, how long do worms live? Yeah. They can, yeah. Yeah. They can usually live in captivity between two to three years, which is pretty wild. Um, but if they're outside, there's a lot more um, predators and just other, other creatures trying to, to get them. Um, and they'll usually live for like six months, something like that. So it's different captivity versus outside. All right, let's do one more question and then um, we will be done. I'm going to follow up with everyone and send out an email with a slide. And so if I see another question that we might have missed, I will follow up with that answer. Um, and the last question was, how are, it says, are worms like caterpillars? So how, I guess, how are, they the same and how are they different caterpillars and worms <laughs> yes so i they're they're similar to caterpillars but caterpillars have so basically a worm is just the shape the body shape um classification so caterpillars have legs and and little feet right and that's something that also becomes transforms into a butterfly so those are kind of the key differences between yeah. those um yeah <laughs> cool um all right did you see any other questions that you wanted to cover are you <laughs> um oh this is a good question how long does it take for the compost to be done oh, um so yeah. as the the worms start to move through the the food scraps and turn into compost it could take about two to three months until you have like a good amount of compost to actually harvest from your worm composting bin. Um, like I said, I just harvested mine, so there wasn't a lot of compost in there. Um, but when I harvested it, I've had uh, like a whole bin full of compost, which was really cool. cool. So I just yeah. harvested it because it's getting nice out and I'm gonna add it to my plants outside. Yeah, it's, it's so beautiful what it does to plants. They just like flourish. <laughs> with a yeah. little worm poop on them. It's really cool. Um, all right, I think we're gonna call it. I will look through your questions and try to answer if there's some more that we missed. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Cassie, so much. If you guys are interested in this, I'm really excited to see if you make your own worm bin or if you keep doing it, if you're already doing it, that's great. Um, check out Plant Chicago, where Cassie works and where um, she's, talking about this from um, where they do a lot of cool programs like this and everyone have a great weekend. Thank you so much again. Bye. Thank you. Thank Cassie. you. You're welcome. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it was very, very fun. Thank you.
All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh oh, I'm going to end the meeting for all if I leave. Is that okay, Karina? Um, yeah, it looks like people are, are leaving okay. and that's, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was really thank fun. Thank you. Have a great yeah. weekend. You too. Bye. Take care. Bye.